Hey everyone, I'm Bill. I'm with Cali Moto TV. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Laguna Seca Raceway, where today, today, first of all, has been an amazing day. We're at the end of the California Revs Ducati track day. Huge shout out to Ducati for uh, hosting this beautiful day. Um, but today we're collecting two brand new Panigale motorcycles, courtesy of Ducati North America, Alex, Thank you so much for getting us the opportunity to take these for a couple weeks. I tried to get him in the video, but he's like, it's a no-go. But uh, today he gave us the keys to a brand new 2020 Panigale V4S, along with the brand new 2021 Panigale V2. That's right, we have both of these for a couple weeks. Me and Bogner are gonna take them out on the street. We've actually been on both of these bikes already on track today, so uh, you guys will have to stay tuned. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Of course, smash that like button and ring the bell notification because we're gonna have a lot of content on these two bikes coming up. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. But um, we're at the end of the day, so we've got to collect these. So we are taking these home for a couple weeks. So let's get these things loaded up in the trailer. Let's get them home. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a thorough walk around on both of the bikes, go over the statistics, the difference between the Panigale V4S and the Panigale V2. And uh, of course, then we're going to get them on the street. We're going to be doing some versus V2 versus V4. And then we're going to be doing, of course, the V4 Panigale S versus the Street Fighter V4S. So make sure you stay tuned. But uh, let's get these things loaded up. Let's get them home. Let's take a look around the bike and then let's get them out on the street. All right, we are back from Laguna Seca. Actually, we are a week later and we have been able to spend some time on both the Panigale V4S and the Panigale V2. And I have to say what a joy these bikes have been. Ducati North America, thank you guys very much for allowing us to have these bikes for as long as we've had them. Um, today's video is really gonna be an in-depth walk around spec wise of the Ducati V4S and the Ducati V2. Now, if you guys are crossed up between these two and you're not sure, do I get a V4? Do I get a V2? We're gonna walk through all of the spec differences between pricing, uh, also motor-wise, horsepower-wise, seat height-wise, everything. We're going over all of the specs today. So let's start with the V4 and let's get an in-depth look, walk around the V4, and then we'll get over to the V2. We'll do the same thing and then we'll do a final comparison. And then at the end of the video, we'll give you guys a little opinion of what I have of each of these bikes. So let's get the walk around on the V4 and let's see what we think about this thing. We got the V4S Benigali out on Laguna Seca for a ride, and this thing is such a monster. Jeez. All right, so this is the 2021 Ducati Panigale V4S. And this model does come in uh, essentially two models. It comes in the V4 and the V4S. So two different pricings. The V4 is gonna come in at 22,295, which pretty much the only difference, I'll just get this out of the way, pretty much the only difference between the V4 and the V4S is the suspension and the wheels. I believe that's the only two major uh, differences between the V4 and the V4S. So the V4 standard is 22,295. Now right here we have the V4S at 28,695. And uh, you know, I do have the, as you see back there, the 
Street Fighter V4S, and I say the S and the suspension on this thing in the electronic is absolutely superb. So uh, I would splurge for the V4S personally. So, uh, you know, while we're up front, let's go ahead and talk about the brakes. Uh, obviously, Brembo brakes all the way around with the Olean suspension. The Brembos on the Panigale V4S are a little bit better than the brakes on the Street Fighter. I believe the Street Fighter and the V2 carry the same master, but the brakes on the V4S master is slightly better. Uh, again, with the electronic suspension, you do get the electronic damper, which is so superb. Absolutely love the electronic damper. Uh, 1103 cc's producing 214 horsepower at a whopping 13,000 RPMs at a max redline of 14.5. So massive, massive numbers. 91 and a half pound feet of torque at 10,000 RPMs. Again, massive numbers. This thing is just packed with torque. Now, it comes with the, obviously, as standard, a six-speed um, auto quick shift or the speed shift or auto blip, whatever everyone wants to call it. It's got the auto blip. The seat height on this sits at 32.9 inches. Now, this particular bike is equipped with the comfort seat. I believe that's the one that's on there. This is equipped by Ducati with that. This is an added option, which I think adds another half inch to the height of the bike. So you're gonna probably be right around 33 and a half inches with the comfort seat. Um, 120, 70, 17 wheels on the front and the wheel on the rear, massive 260 rear tire, and uh, these are the Diablo Super Corsas. This is what comes on the bike. Now, we've run the, the uh, what are they, the SP1s. You'll see them over on the uh, Panigale, but uh, we just replaced these tires because we already burned through the SP1 tires. Um, gas mileage isn't that great. You're gonna get it between, anywhere between 100 and 120 miles per tank. 4.2 gallon tank, so nothing major. Uh, major modifications for the 2020 over the 2019, 2018 is this beautiful front end. I absolutely love the front end with the winglets. Um, if we lost the winglets, I'd still love the front end because it's so much wider and girthier than the front end of the 1819. Now, when we come around the rear end, the rear end is basically the same as the 1819. There's no major changes on the rear end. Um, but just the, the pure refinements that Ducati made in 2020 has me sold on this bike. It really has. Uh, integrated blinkers in the front, LED running lights, so when you get this thing fired up, you get these beautiful running lights up front. Uh, just gorgeous, I love it. So the dry weight on this thing is 400, or the curb weight, excuse me, 436 pounds. So it's not the lightest in the bunch, but it is, uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, if you guys want just some real quick numbers on a V4R, $40,000 on a 998 cc motorcycle. So you're almost 100 cc's bigger in this motorcycle, but that 1,000 cc's producing 221 horsepower and 83 pound-feet of torque. So this has actually got a lot more torque than the V4R, um, but the V4R comes in like a lot less weight, almost 10 pounds lighter on the V4R. So that is your Panigale V4S. Let's go ahead and swap out and get the Panigale V2 up here, center stage, and let's go over the specs on these things, and then we'll talk about what my, uh, my thoughts are on the V2, the V4. The V2 on track, uh, I spoke very, very highly of that bike. It's pretty dang aggressive. This V2 seems like it's just a little 
more rider friendly. Here it is, the all new 2021 Ducati Panigale V2. Absolutely gorgeous. And you know, we should have put this thing on the stand on the other way around because the first major cosmetic modification that they made to this thing is welcome back single-sided swing arm to the V2. Um, I love it. The look of it is just amazing. But let's dive into the specs on this thing. Talk about everything comparison to the V4. So the V2 comes in two colors, where the V4 only comes in one. The uh, V4, the V2 comes in red and this beautiful white. Uh, I prefer the white personally. Uh, 16795 is the price for this as equipped, basically standard with everything you see here. Uh, there is no additional V4, or excuse me, V2S model, so to speak. Uh, all the V2s do come with manual suspension. We'll talk about that in a second. But uh, the V2 comes in two colors, priced at 16795 Now, starting off the front again, Massive Brembo brakes, same basic brakes as the Panigale V4. It is the Brembo 320 millimeter rotors, little bit different pistons, as you can see there, uh, attached to obviously the manual Showa suspension for the front end. Probably the only thing I wish this had, and of course at this price point we can't ask for electronic suspension, but I would have loved to seen electronic suspension on this, but it is uh, manual or analog suspension. Um, TFT display, we didn't talk about this in the V4, but the TFT display is slightly smaller than the V4 TFT display. And of course you've got the manual uh, non-adjustable steering damper on the V2. Now, the rear suspension, little bit different as you can see uh, here in the rear. It is uh, adjustable, fully adjustable, but again, manual. The quick shifter is standard on this bike, so you're gonna get a standard uh, up and down quick shifter for the V2. Uh, wheels are slightly, slightly different. The front wheel appears to be, and measurement-wise, is the same, but the rear wheel, houses a 180 tire. So we're at a 180.60, which is a little bit odd, but we're on a 5.5 inch rear wheel where the uh, Street Fighter and the V4S all house a six inch wide wheel. So a little bit, little bit wider. You can kind of tell from the rear end that this thing's not quite as wide horsepower on this thing. A bit surprising to see 155 horsepower at 10,750 RPMs. Uh, the max RPMs I believe on this is 12, 11, 5. So almost right at peak is where the max horsepower is. But we're pulling a massive 7, 76.7 
foot pounds of torque on this thing and that's a 9,000 RPM. So you're getting a lot of that lower end torque and then up high, you're starting to get that horsepower. So really, really nice. Um, again, wheelie control is added. Dynamic slide control, uh, traction control, your quick shifter, full LED running lights, full riding modes, cornering ABS. All of the electronics has been added on to the V2 this year, which is basically everything is, again, off of the V4 and the Street Fighter. Not quite as advanced because of the suspension. The suspension does play a little better role in these two because the suspension allows some of the um, gyroscopic sensors to work with the electronic suspension where this doesn't have that. So something to think about. It's got basic traction control and basics wheelie control, but the suspension plays a big part in it over on its big brother, just FYI. Uh, Exhaust on this thing, well, you don't have many options on this because of how the exhaust is routed. It is a two into one, back into two, back into one. So it's just all wrapped around there. The catalytic converters all incorporated in. Now this run, this is running, I believe, the new Euro 5 system where the 2020 and the 20... Yeah, the 2020 Panigale D4 is still running the Euro 4, so uh, we were able to kind of squeeze in a little bit more out of the V4s. The V2 kind of got gypped this year with the Euro 5s. 4.5 gallon uh, tank, it sips fuel a little bit better, so you should be getting about 120 miles per tank or there above. Again, single-sided swing arm, very, very nice. And uh, the instrument cluster, we didn't talk about the instrument cluster in the other bike, the V4, but this is slightly smaller. It's more like the Super Sport S gauge cluster than the bigger cluster on the Street Fighter and the Panigale V4. But the I, I personally love this red accent with the highlights of the running lights, the daytime running lights. I think it looks gorgeous. Uh, of course, you've got the blinkers integrated into the mirrors and then uh, the rear. Actually, the rear looks very, very similar. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the I know that there's a V2 version uh, plate eliminator, but it is really, really close. I believe that you can get the V4 rear tail, which is a little bit longer piece here, uh, if you're looking to mod that, but I'm not sure that it comes in the white. I think you gotta get it red, so you can kinda see the two tails over there. They're a little bit longer than this one. It's a little bit stubbier on this one. Um, modifying this isn't quite as easy. The passenger pegs, don't come off as easy because you've got obviously your your exhaust is in the way. Uh, one of the things I did notice on this one, the single sided swing arm kind of looks like a 1299. If you guys know if that's a 1299 single sided swing arm, let me know in the comments down below because I'd like to know because I saw 1299 the other day and it looked almost identical. But this is the 2021 Pinagali. V2. Um, oh, one of the last things I wanted to talk about, obviously weight. Weight, we are at 441 pounds curb weight, which is actually heavier than the V4S, which is a little bit crazy. And we have the seat height coming in at 33.4, which is actually slightly higher than the V4S, which is a little bit surprising because Bogna seems to fit on this better than she does the V4 and my Street Fighter. So just a little bit of uh, insight there on the specs. So I hope you guys enjoy the V2. Now this V2 is most likely coming to the collection here at the house. If you guys haven't seen the new collection video, we'll link it up above, but the Panigale V2, let's get them both in and I'll tell you guys what I think of both of these bikes. All right, well, I hope this helped you guys out a little bit. If you guys are trying to make a decision between the Panigale V4S and the Panigale V2, um, they're pretty close as far as size wise. 
I feel like the V2 is a little bit more upright. You're not quite hunched over quite as much as the V4. Now, differences between the V4 and my Street Fighter, I will take my Street Fighter all day long over this V4 Panigale. The reason is mainly, is just, this thing just demands to be ridden. You have to be riding this thing at over 100 miles an hour to really have a good time on this thing. And it becomes almost impractical. The tight twisties, it's not a fun bike. Where the Street Fighter, that's a fun bike. So my personal opinion between the Street Fighter and the V4, a little sneak peek, but uh, stay tuned because we've got the Panigale V4S versus the Street Fighter V4S coming up, so stay tuned. The V2 is our pick between these two, between both me and Bogna, so much so that Bogna is actually buying a V2. That's right, we're adding a V2 to the collection. Uh, we just first have to find one. They are quite a popular bike with all of the great modifications they've done to this thing. Um, adding the traction control, adding the single-sided swing arm, uh, just the refinements that they've made to this with the better TFT and just everything, this bike, needs to be in our collection. So the V2 has been a great bike. Now I got to ride both of these bikes on track and I actually enjoyed the V2 on track. Now Bogna got to ride both of these on track and she also liked the V2. Now on street, I haven't had the opportunity to ride the V2 yet because Bogna has fallen in love with it. But we're gonna get out one last time on this and hopefully I'll be able to ride the V2. But stay tuned. Uh, I hope this was informational. The bikes are very similar, but very different. <laughs> um, I love the electronic suspension. I wish that we could get electronic suspension. I wish they had a Panigale V2S with the electronic suspension on this bike. Uh, I wish, but they don't, so we'll have to stick with the analog or manual suspension. But uh, I hope this, uh, again, was informational to you guys. Thanks for sticking around. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Of course, smash the like button. And then ring that bell notification because it's going to notify you when we have more content on these things. We have track videos coming out on this thing. We have uh, some street rides. Again, we've got the V4S Panigale versus the V4S Street Fighter. And then we've got a little me and Bogna on both of these bikes out on the open road. So stay tuned. But uh, thank you guys for sticking around and we'll see you guys next video. Bye guys.